Amir is about a 13-year-old Kurdish child who ends up losing his home and being separated from his family and stranded by himself um, in a, the largest unofficial refugee camp in Europe. My name's Caitlin. There he is eventually befriended by a, a well-meaning but kind of overstretched British volunteer and she becomes his last hope for salvation. So the story was inspired by some time we spent volunteering in the Calais uh, refugee camp um, and we met a number of children there uh, and the story is based on a number of the children that we met there and their stories of um, how they were separated from their families and how they uh, took these incredible journeys on foot um, and then ended up in this uh, pretty uh, terrifying place. So I think from conception through completion, so we first in Calais, I believe in February of 2016, and we then spent some months researching and sort of deepening our knowledge about this stuff, and uh, we returned to shoot in July, no, in June of 2016, and then the post-production took quite a long time, and I believe we finished it in August of 2017. So that's almost a year of post-production, and the shoot was seven days. So the film was partly funded by some American foundations, so the David Ross Fetzer Foundation, which is one of the only um, funding bodies for shorts, gave us some money. Also um, uh, Tisch School of the Arts, where I, where I went to school, and also the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, plus personal contacts, so like family, friends, everyone who got roped in <laughs> also contributed. Casting was really tricky. We we were really driven to make this movie as uh, true to reality as possible. Um, Vic has worked a lot directing uh, non-actors before, so initially we really wanted to find um, a child refugee from the camp that we could work with and do as much of the shooting in the camp as possible. Um, we found this was next to impossible because the children uh, kept disappearing because they were constantly trying to continue on with their journeys. Um, and they would frequently go missing, which was very disturbing. Um, and also they were, we realized quite quickly, um, not going to be able to go through these kind of difficult experiences that were still quite fresh in their minds. So yeah, we ended up having to do casting in London and found an amazing uh, child actor who was able to bring that energy without um, having to be, Traumatized having to have gone through it himself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess the other challenge was shooting in the camp um, because it's, it's quite a challenging environment. Um, when we went on our first recce with our HODs, our DP, Robbie Ryan, sort of remarked that it was like a tinderbox, that it was calm, it seemed calm, but at the slightest provocation, the whole thing could go up in flames. And that's pretty much exactly what happened the weekend before we were supposed to go out there and shoot. There was a big riot that broke out between the Afghans and the Sudanese communities and that Sudanese part of the camp where we were hoping to shoot just burned down. Uh, and so, yeah, that made us reconsider how we were gonna, you know, pull this off and we ended up shooting, I guess, a little bit more of the film on a set um, and a little bit less in the camp itself. But it was always about finding that middle ground to bring the authenticity, but also to make the shoot safe for everyone involved. I mean, we were really lucky to have um, not just Robbie, but also uh, Jacqueline Abrams, who's um, also a very experienced production designer who um, came on board. And I mean, really, we were spoilt with the um, number of talented and much more experienced um, heads of department who came on and were incredibly generous with their time and enthusiasm and, um, and their advice as well. They shared their vision and really got behind what we were trying to do. It was. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty awe-inspiring. Mm. And with Robbie, it, it was kind of an amazing, I don't know, opportunity because, um, yeah, I, I didn't know him and I just cold emailed him uh, and he just responded being like, okay, sure. <laughs> and I was like, okay, great. He said, the only caveat was, but I only shoot shorts on film. And I was like, okay, but I've got all the film and the camera and I can just give it to you. And I was like, well, okay. So he was incredibly generous. He gave us all the film for free. He organized everything. He had such a small crew. He was pulling focus himself. So he just had a clapper loader and he had another AC. But yeah, it was a three person camera crew, even though we were shooting 16 mils. So 
yeah, it was very contained. And actually the way he went about it felt like we were shooting a doc or something. It was just very organic and very fluid. And he moved around with that camera like it was a handheld. I, yeah, uh, well, was it was handheld. running around, jumping on his knees. I mean, it was incredible. Yeah, he's pretty strong. Pretty athletic guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's been, it's been a pretty proud moment to get uh, nominated for the BAFTA, I would say. That was a good moment. Um, I think <laughs> finishing it was a good moment. Like there were moments because I had a lot of trouble in the edit and we kind of had to restructure the narrative a little bit in the edit. Um, so that post-production process took a long time and a lot, I collaborated with a lot of other editors who helped to edit the movie. And yeah, when it was finally, when the picture was locked, that was a proud moment because I thought it would never come. My advice would be uh, to go and work on other people's films. Um, even if you're not going to film school, go and make friends with people who are in film school. There are tons of people making tons of movies out there and you can go and get stuck in, um, work in different roles, learn everything that you can. It all comes into play. Mm. And I guess my advice would be don't be afraid to reach out to your dream collaborators because they probably will agree, or they might agree. So I think it's good to be bold and do that.